right about here, in 1869. The first, or was he the first? We'll get into that a bit later. But what many people widely regard as the first mafia boss in America to get whacked lay dying right here. And his story is kind of a interesting version of, uh, of American history because when we think of the Mafia, we tend to think of, you know, New York and the wise guys and the, kind of the big city slicking life. Um, this is in New Orleans right here is on Decatur Street. This would have been called Old Levy Street, and this would have had lots of buildings all over it. Um, and then obviously the Mississippi River's right there. So here, on April 1st, 1869, a man was laying dying. He had been shot at close range with a shotgun. The, the balls piercing various parts of his face and head. This man is Raphael Agnello, or Agnello, but Agnello is the way it's written. It's written a thousand different ways, of course, back in these days. I am located right now on Decatur Street in New Orleans. Just a block or so that way is Jackson Square. I think way off in the distance you can see Café du Monde, which would have been part of the French market, so this would have been in the time early in the morning when all these people are out. These buildings would not have been there, but it would have been buildings all along this, which would have been called Old Levy Street at the time. The, the levee is right there, and there's the Mississippi River on the other side of this. But back to, uh, back to Raphael Agnello. Many people consider him the first Mafia boss. Um, as a historian, I always like to say these things out there because some people do consider it, and it is a very, uh, when it comes to the Mafia, it's a very artful subject to discuss because it's, other than like the commission being, you know, invented at that dinner in the Bronx in like the 1930s, they're really, it's a lot of uh, metamorphosis, it's a lot of evolution of, uh, of, you know, organized crime. So the question then becomes, at what point do you consider this, you know, consider it the mafia? Uh, you know, do you, do you just start right at um, where, you know, where the commission begins? Do you start it at, you know, this guy or that guy? We'll look at some of this old stuff on this building here. Because this would have been there at the time. This would have been uh, the bakery of Reese and Company. And this kind of plays a role in there. You can even see through the window. You can even see through these old windows. You can see the back. This is kind of a, a big deal for this. But, um, yeah, to kind of continue on to my... We'll, we'll walk across the street. Which is, I came here early in the morning. This is not something you could typically, typically do during the day. Uh, in New Orleans is, is come across the street, you know, just in the middle of the day. It's always packed full of people. Sidewalk is packed with tourists. But yeah, it's right here. So, uh, in the old days, <coughs> this would have been, uh, well, these buildings would, would have been there. The Grand's Fruit Store was at 119 Levy Street. Joseph Macheka had one at 127. Now, the street numbers are different, but if you look at them and match them up, you can use, um, you know, historian tools like old Sanborn fire maps. They will tell you about this. They they'll they'll tell you what the what the addresses were. So uh, I'm just going to read this straight from the newspaper. About 10 o'clock Thursday morning, a difficulty occurred between the corner of Toulouse and Levy Streets between two Sicilians, which resulted in the homicide of a man named Raphael Ando. Again, they changed these people's names. 
and the shooting, it appears, was done in the heat of a sudden quarrel. The post-mortem examination discloses the fact that the pistol used was a single-barrel cavalry pistol loaded with a number of balls, five of which entered the head of the deceased. Uh, the men, together with the godson of the murdered man, were walking down Old Levy Street, which is this. It's now Decatur Street. But this was Old Levy Street. So right over there, you can hear the seagulls. This is, uh, this is the Old Levy right there. And then there's, this is where the ships would have docked. This would have been the Picayune Tier. And on the other side is the Mississippi River. Where I'm standing now would have been buildings, obviously, and this would have been called Front Street kind of in the middle of this. But now it's the old Jackson Brewery. And this is, you know, a bunch of tourist shops and coffee shops and things like that. The godson and the murdered man were walking down Old Levy Street together, engaged in a quarrel when opposite the fruit store of Joseph Macheka at 127 Old Levy Street, the man fired at the deceased with a deadly result. The homicide then ran up uh, then ran into the backyard of Grandy's Fruit Store at 119 Old Levy Street and thence climbed over the adjoining premises of Norman and Reese when the accidental discharge of his second pistol so severely wounded Frank Phillips in the legs just at the moment that Frank Sekiro, the godson of the deceased, ran into the backyard and commenced firing on the homicide. Three shots took effect on him. It was then that the crowd came and in the confusion the wounded man escaped as before announced kind of gives you a little bit of the newspaper headline of this. So the man, Raphael Agnello, was staying with his godson over there. We'll, we'll go to that house shortly. But they came, they walked down the street here. There had been lots of beef um, going back to this murdering of Latero Barba, who may or may not have been one of the high-ranking mafiosi. We don't know. But, you know, I'll cross the street here. We'll go check out the spot where the man was killed. So, doing my due diligence, this would have been the store that they were talking about. This is the Grandy's Fruit Store. And you have Joseph Macheka's uh, fr fruit, fruit Store here. And then Norman Reese Bakery would have been right there. So... He would have gotten capped right here. So after the murder of Latero Barba, things really heated up between the Sicilians that were from Palermo and the ones that were basically not from Palermo. Palermo being like the big time cities, right? So it's like New York versus the rest of the country type situation. So the Palermans, they, uh, they kind of had all the power. Raphael Agnello and all of that. Um, you know, th 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 these guys are the are the leaders. Raphael Agnello is kind of running the docks around here. The it, the Sicilians never have any kind of problems when it comes to uh, you know uh, like work stoppages and stuff. Now there are there are protests all over about wages and, and things like that. There are, there are protests, but never with the Sicilians, right? Because it's, it's fixed prices, all the trappings of a mafia situation, right? Control, control, control. So, following some of the action here. It's also, this is where See if we can get as close to the back as possible. Oh, well, there's those back right through there. Huh. I wanted the people to know that you can eat where there were some incidents happening. Yeah, so maybe here is where he would have tossed his pistol and kind of taken off running.
But this, of course, wasn't the end of it all. This would just be the beginning of a big blood feud. <laughs>